Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and I have to confess that I bought Phoenix Rising just because I run several gaming channels and I have to make more material for them. And you know, I'm so glad I did. I was expecting game for kids. You know, airy fairy unicorn title where every hero is childishly dumb, puzzles are easy and fighting can be done while scrolling in the Instagram at the same time. But boy oh boy, I was so wrong. I know, I know, unbelievable. I started to feel that something is a sus with my prejudice when I heard the first joke, which was this one. Zeus! How I missed you, Prometheus, my favorite castle. You chained me to this rock and fed my liver to an eagle out of love. <laughs> And later I started to realize that the whole game will be filled with jokes that I found funny. Even in the character creation menu, Prometheus is on fire with his jokes. The color ugh, of Poseidon's vomit. So during the whole game, Zeus and Prometheus are talking in the background about you in the past tense. Like everything you do already happened. You know, when they say, and then he saw the giant. You, you can be sure that you will see a giant in a second, because it's your story that already happened, but you don't know how yet. Only gods know. In other words, you have to live the story gods are talking about. You just hope that they will never say something like, and then the giant took out his enormous ding dong and smashed feet to the ground. Yeah, I don't want this to happen to my character. That narration creates a strange feeling of having no free will, but also the game lets you do quests and missions in any order and does not force you to stay on a linear path. Immortals do not take itself seriously at all, game mocks your character's face and even your name, which is Phoenix. You can't change it. Developers name you like that and then they are joking about it being lame. That is great. In fact, almost every character I have met in my play playtime had distinct personalities and were funny. I'm like almost 40 years old and I was amused all the time. So my prejudice that this game is childishly dumb evaporated really quickly. So let's talk about fighting part. Can you scroll on Instagram at the same time? Yes, if you have three hands. Which is quite rare, but I don't want to discriminate against anyone. And for the rest of us two-handed or even with less hands, this is an impossible task because fighting here is hard. I played on normal and it was hard, not Dark Souls kind of hard. That's what she said. Oh, shut up. But if you take on a stronger enemy, you can be sure that you won't survive the battle from the first time. Game takes you on a learning curve, which is quite steep. In example, I decided to kill a Minotaur, and I died about 12 times before I did it. Dying usually just places you right before the start of the battle by autosave, so you lose almost nothing except your time and pride. And then you can try to kill the monstrosity again and again. And and again. Lesser beings dies way easier, so it's definitely not a Dark Souls, but it has some vibes. Here you will not find childishly easy combat as I was expecting before, and that is great. So the last thing this game is famous about, puzzles. Should I even say that I wasn't expecting puzzles to be so hard in here? Once I spent an hour in Puzzle Rift trying to figure it out, an hour, am I dumb? No, yes, maybe. Puzzles are made with iron logic and makes you think out of the box and usually you don't realize the simplest things because you just don't think they are possible. You are your own worst enemy. Yes, and that makes every puzzle even harder. The game is open world, and in this world you can find puzzle rifts with great treasures, so you dive into them and then you have to reach the goodies. Every rift is different, with different kinds of mind-bending logic behind them. Some are easier than others, and some are unbelievably hard. To be fair, if your favorite part of playing Skyrim was puzzle solving to get access to various ruins, this game will absolutely amaze you and be your best friend. And if if you hate puzzles, does not compute. Avoid this title, because puzzles are a significant part of the game and you can't avoid them in any way. And the rest of the game is just beautiful. You can find various treasures, new weapons, upgrade them and upgrade your powers. Also here you can climb, just like in the Breath of the Wild, almost on any surface. And also you can glide down with your wings. Basically you climb onto the tallest mountain and jump down to fly over the area. That is a great feeling, the thing I'm missing in many open world games. Of course. 
boss I wish they gave me a flying mount instead, but I know that the game mechanics can't allow that. But hey, what about flying mount when you finish the main story? That would be cool, every game should give us one. So the verdict would be 9 vodkas out of 10. Really, really great game. That's it, thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time, bye.